मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सैम ऑडिबल सेशन सर ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ The, our HD and the management and the team Aero, I warmly welcome you to the session, sir. So, Dr. Rai Shrikant is currently working as scientist chef at ASL DRDO Hyderabad. He is an alumni of IIT Mumbai and uh, IIT Hyderabad. His research area is material science and engineering, and narrowing down to nano composites for aerospace. He has. Uh, an experience of uh, working as an assistant professor for 3 years in engineering college from april 2000 to 2003 and uh, from march 2003 he is he is with drdo so as a member and scientist at drdo he has been a part of many projects which are taken up by the government of india in the materials field and his uh, major projects include uh, functionally graded composites carbon nanotubes and nanotube reinforcement composites ultra high temperature nano ceramics broadband stealth fighter uh, stealth structures for fighter aircraft structures stealth materials for airborne platforms stealth structures for pylons of fighter aircraft he is a member of Uh, professional societies like indian society for advancement of materials and process engineering indian carbon society electron microscopy society of india he is a recipient of awards like national science day award at the laboratory level smart materials and systems technology award national award from isampe laboratory award for the best technical paper best technical paper at uh, emsi international conference he has about 30 international publications in the field of composites and aerospace materials and also about 300 plus citations with 12 h10 index and 11 i10 index papers he has one approved indian patents five and provisional patents five provisional patents and one european patents he was a member of sub committee on national materials policy compiled the strengths and weaknesses of the country in the area of high performance fibers composites radomes and presented to the main committee of national materials he is a reviewer for various reputed international journals on composites guiding six students for phd's as an external guide about 20 invited talks at various indian universities like jntu hyderabad kakinada andhra university sardar patel university drdo labs engineering colleges in telangana and andhra etc his broad range of research and uh, research interests are achievements and challenges for india on high temperature composites for defense aero and space achievements and challenges for india on nano composites for defense technology gaps in the area of stealth structures for defense he initiated new areas of research which were so far not initiated in india by any research group like alumna alumna composites high temperature stealth structures so with this brief i would like to welcome you to the session sir thank you madam for your kind introduction yes I stopped my. Yeah, okay. I'll share my screen. Yes.
is it visible to you madam now screen is yes, visible sir. yes sir it is visible okay okay so good morning to all of you and thanks to shweta madam for kind introduction uh, i'll be talking on uh, nano composites for defense and aerospace applications so uh, not only for structural applications i'll also talk on some functional applications of composites functional applications that include the electrical conductivity micro absorption like stealth applications and other things so besides showing my own work so i will also show some of the trends uh, in india in various drdo and other labs and also what are the global trends and where do we have the gap in terms of technology in the area of nano composites okay. so before going to the overview of uh, the overall scope of nano composites achievements and challenges i would like to show that any new technology uh, has got its own uh, challenges to really implement into any of the systems the challenges that include already there may be some uh, conventional systems so which are already proven people are familiar with that in terms of its properties processes and testing and there is already a benchmark cost for that so unless we develop a new material and a new process which is finally performance wise it is better than the conventional material and cost wise it is affordable scalable repeatable then only it can find the applications this is where still nano technology is struggling to get so in the area of composites especially if you see today carbon fiber as a reinforcement has established itself with epoxy matrix so carbon epoxy composites are the workhorse composites for almost all aerospace systems like aircraft or missiles or anything uh, so comparison benchmark comparison for any nano composite will be with the carbon epoxy composite so we will show how do our nano materials fare in terms of uh, carbon epoxy composite comparison now so as i told uh, my talk will not only uh, focus on uh, structural applications where we will compare it with the conventional composites in terms of strength stiffness toughness and damping properties and other things i will also show where the nanometals can have other applications in terms of functional properties like electrical and thermal management sensing and actuation emi shielding self healing composites self cleaning composites and stealth structures which are very strategic in nature so nano does not mean it is only improving strength it also means uh, imparting uh, simultaneously various other functional properties as shown here so we will see one slide each on most of these uh, properties as well and what is the global scenario in that. okay and not only this this advantage of nano materials is there is a possibility of combining these two like uh, better strength with some functionality where uh, in conventional composites you will not have that advantage in nano materials you can combine a conventional composite properties in terms of strength and stiffness with the other functional properties like stealth or self cleaning and other things so that we will see now so uh, most of you may be knowing composites but for those who are not familiar with the composites composite consists of two phases one is a binder phase so this uh, what i am showing here the liquid that is being smeared or the liquid that is poured it is like a gum kind of liquid or a binder and the other one is a reinforcement phase here what uh, you are seeing is a fabric so the, this is a reinforcement or load bearing member the purpose of binder is to hold the reinforcement layers as shown here together uh, to ensure that they take the load uh, uniformly and the load distribution is uniform and the entire reinforcement pack of reinforcement resist the applied loads as a single entity not as an individual system so basically composite consists of two two phases one is the binder phase other one is a mat um, reinforcement phase so today as i told uh, the most of the reinforcement phases that are used in aerospace systems are carbon fiber uh, reinforcement uh, it's typical image i have shown here carbon fibers are basically a pan polyacrylic nitrile fibers which are drawn in the form of uh, fibers pan is a polymer precursor like this kind of liquid only which is uh, jetted through small orifices of around 6 to 8 micron diameter and uh, quenched the moment it comes out it is quenched and then heat treated to 2000 degree centigrade so finally they get carbon pure carbon in the form of fiber so the speciality of this carbon fiber is its density is around 1.8 gram per cc and strength is almost 5600 mp so if you compare it with uh, iron uh, today uh, which is previously most popular as a structural material it has got almost 
two to three times better strength than iron with density less than almost three times less. So it because its density is only one point eight. So today, if you see all aerospace systems, uh, missiles, aircrafts, even civilian aircrafts like uh, Dreamliner, Dreamliner, Boeing, and uh, Airbus, everyone is using carbon fiber reinforced epoxy in place of metallic systems because it gives you a lot of advantage in terms of lightweight, better strength, better durability, no corrosion problems, no problems with the, any some. Moist environment or some polluted environments where chemicals are present in the atmosphere. So, because of all these advantages, the carbon fiber reinforced composites have replaced the metallic uh, subsystems in most of the aerospace and defense applications. So, with this brief introduction, let us see further on the composites. The composites are classified based on the matrix system into three categories. As I told, composite consists of a reinforcement phase and a matrix phase. Or the binder phase. If the binder is polymer, it is called polymer matrix composite. If the binder is metal, it is a metal matrix composite. If the binder is a ceramic matrix, then it is a ceramic matrix composite. So again, uh, depending on the temperature of application, we have to choose what kind of binder we have to go for. Polymeric matrix composites are generally uh, used for low temperatures, generally 150 to 200. There are special polymers which can go up to 300 degrees centigrade also. So there are other, um, if the temperature applications are higher, 1000, 2000, 2500, then you have to go for ceramic matrix composites. Metal matrix composites are still in the very initial stage. It has not found many applications except a few research interests that we will not discuss much. So again, in polymer matrix composites, there are two important classes of materials. One is the carbon fiber reinforced, other one is the glass fiber reinforced composites. Carbon fiber, as I told, if the reinforcement is carbon fiber, it is a carbon fiber reinforced plastic or polymer, CFRP we call. If the reinforcement is glass, glass is drawn as a fiber and used as a reinforcement, then it becomes a glass fiber reinforced composite. Most of the civilian applications like automobile applications, even the locomotives like trains, interiors, most of the places like ship hulls, there because carbon fiber is costly, people go for glass fiber as a reinforcement with the polymer as a matrix in most of the applications. So today what we will see, we will see the nanomaterial applications in terms of uh, typical properties of composites. Composites are judged in terms of their tensile property, compression property, bending property, and also damping, damping and impact applications. Okay, each, each area of application calls for a uh, significant high value for a particular property. Like in case of missiles, so here what we are seeing is the different stages of missile where there is some uh, solid propellant here. When the solid propellant burns, it gives thrust for the missile to move. But when it is burning, it is like an explosive. So it gives a hoop tensile forces to the shell. So here what you need is high tensile strength. Okay, And uh, here the torpedo is fired. So it hits the water body. Here what you need uh, is a better impact resistance. Here you can see wings of an aircraft where as you increase the width, the, the length of the wing so the bending bending of the wings are possible uh, so stiffness is important similarly composite bridges or uh, lightweight bridges where bending strength is essential than the tensile strength similarly here the torpedoes where the damping means the noise sound noise uh, should not be there so that enemy will not detect easily so here the uh, sound damping is an important parameter so these are some of the properties of composites and we will see how nanomaterials can fare to improve these properties. Other properties also I'll show like composites are also used widely in uh, armors, both for helicopter armor as well as a tank armor. So tanks that we see here in the frontal zones and the side zones, there will be some armors. The armors are basically meant to protect our own tank from the enemy fires. The bullets are heavy artillery fires. So generally glass epoxy composites are used here because they have got very good toughness and other properties. Uh, so we will see how the nanomaterials will be uh, useful in improving these properties. Similarly, helicopter armor, generally in place of glass here, Kevlar as a fabric and polymer as a matrix is used for helicopter armors because of the uh, lightweight of Kevlar compared to glass uh, fiber reinforced components. And as I told, stealth is a very important area uh, to reduce the detectability of airborne systems. There are applications for nanomaterials in the area of stealth. So we will see how the nanomaterials are useful. Other than that, other functional applications like uh, 
And the aircraft travels at high velocity. The missiles travels at high velocity. They generate electricity, static charge due to friction with the atmosphere. So you need to have the material which is having sufficient conductivity to dissipate the charge. So there are also some applications are there. Then other applications are like other functional applications like uh, when you burn the propellant. So the propellant gases comes with very high velocity and with at very high temperature of more than 2000 degrees centigrade. So you need to have some materials which can withstand the temperatures and channelize the plume uh, so that you get the thrust. So here no metal can withstand. It is only composites, certain composites which can withstand that 2000, 2500 degrees centigrade. So they are called ablative composites. In ablative composites also nanomaterials are widely used. So we will see some of the applications for that. There are so many other applications which we may not touch like self-cleaning cloths and other things which are slightly away from the composite phase. So that what I have shown so far is a polymer matrix uh, composites. So there are applications for nanomaterials in ceramic matrix composites as well. So we will see just one or two slides if possible. Now, Coming to the introduction of uh, nanomaterials, there are so many nanomaterials like nanoclays, graphic nanoparticles, graphene, any material, if you can reduce the size to such an extent that it, at least one of the dimension of this material mm, is less than 100 nanometer, then it becomes a nanometer. It can be a nanoclay, nanographite, like we call it as graphic nanoparticles or anything. But most popular among all these uh, nanomaterials is the carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes are elongated fullerenes. Fullerenes is a kind of a third allotrope of carbon. Here is like a football-like structure. If you take this and elongate it in one dimension, it becomes a one-dimensional structure of a fullerene. That is called carbon nanotubes. If it is only one, uh, one um, fullerene is elongated, then it is a single wall nanotube. If there are concentric circles of fullerenes, embedded in one another, then it becomes a multi-wall carbon nanotubes. Okay. Now let us see the comparison of the carbon nanotubes with carbon fibers. As I told, carbon fibers are the workhorse reinforcements today for almost all aerospace systems. Carbon fibers density versus nanotube density you can see here, so which is around 30-40% less. Then the uh, modulus of carbon fibers is around 700 GPA, varies from uh, type of fiber, there are different grades of fiber. Again, it's that carbon nanotubes have got very high modulus. Then strength of the carbon nanotubes are also reported to be very high, 2 to 8 GPA uh, uh, for carbon fiber. Again, it's that then there are almost 80 GPA strength reported for nanotubes. Then elongation, carbon fibers, what we have seen here, they are brittle. They are not like metals, which are ductile. These carbon fibers are brittle with very low elongation. So nanotubes have got very high degree of elongation. So this has attracted the composite fraternity. Uh, they what composite fraternity thought if we can tap the potential of nanotubes as a reinforcement in place of carbon fiber, even if you use a 10% or 20% of the total strength of nanotubes, then you will end up with a composite of around uh, something like 8 to 16 GPA, again as 2 GPA strength composites that we see today. So that was the uh, motivation for research in the area of carbon nano materials, especially carbon nanotubes. But people realized that uh, in this was uh, the kind of view in 2005 to 2010. So people were of opinion that if we can solve certain technical challenges in the area of nanotubes, like uh, nano purification of nanotubes, as synthesized nanotubes are not pure, if you purify them, then if you improve its adhesion, means if you want to use them as a reinforcement, it should bond well with the matrix. So if you can increase the adhesion, then if you can disperse them, generally they come with the high agglomeration. If you can disperse them properly, probably we will hit very high property in terms of uh, nano composite. So that was the motivation for the research. So this is a typical uh, thing, same thing what I have shown in previous slide, purification, functionalization and dispersion. Uh, there are different methods for synthesis of uh, nanotubes. There are arc chamber synthesis, chemical vapor deposition based synthesis. Depending on the type of synthesis, you will have different degrees of impurities. Most of the impurities are either carbonaceous impurities like uh, some uh, carbon, amorphous carbon kind of thing. And the other one is uh, other impurities are uh, catalysts. Generally, catalysts are used, kerosene kind of catalysts are used. So iron, cobalt, nickel. 
or general impurities. So metallic impurities as well as carbonaceous impurities are the general impurities in the nanomaterials, carbon nanotubes especially. So to remove the impurities, what people used to do is amorphous carbon is uh, unstable. So it uh, burns or oxidizes at around 300 degrees centigrade against almost 450 to 500 degrees centigrade stability for carbon nanomaterials. So if you heat treat it in the air at around 350 degrees centigrade, amorphous carbon will burn. Then to remove the metal impurities, you dissolve it in uh, some, uh, reflux it in some acid, nitric acid or HCl kind of thing where metals will get dissolved. So that is a typical purification methods people have employed. Then as I told, nanotubes have got very high strength, but they don't bond well with other materials. Uh, those who are familiar with organic chemistry, they may be knowing that it is a functional group, the functional group that reacts with other uh, molecules. It is not the chain, long chain. So you can consider the nanotube as a long chain of carbon. So without a functional group, it will not bond with any matrix. Unless there is a bonding between the binder to the reinforcement, you cannot translate the reinforcement strength uh, to the composite. So for that, you need to generate some active functional groups on it. So this, uh, there are different methods we will see. Similarly, you can see as synthesized the nanotubes, how they are entangled. It is like a web of CNTs. Unless you disperse them, they may actually reduce the strength because it acts as a defect zone in the composite. So these are certain challenges. You can see here some of the CNTs that uh, were synthesized at our lab. So you can see here there's a bunch of uh, CNTs highly agglomerated. A close view of that you can see these black color uh, are carbonaceous materials, some graphitic nanoparticles, and some metallic impurities present in the as synthesized CNTs. So these are all, we have purified it. So maybe in next slide somewhere it is there, what purification methods we have done. And we have also, after purification, we have functionalized. As I told, nanotube is like a monk, monk sitting in uh, some forest. It is like the monk has got all powers, but he will not use it for any, any purpose. He will just uh, sit idle. So unless there is a purpose, he will not do it. So similarly, nanotubes have got a very high strength, but to, uh, tap that potential of nanotubes, you have to add some functional group to the nanotubes. So for that, there are different types of functionalizations that are possible, different groups, amine groups, ester groups, acid groups, and all these things. But as the Workhars resin system or the binder is epoxy, amine groups are the most popular uh, functional groups on the nanotubes. Amine functional in nanotubes are most widely used in most of the applications for aerospace. So besides this uh, chemical functionalization, what we call, there is a other functionalization called non-covalent functionalization. Chemical functionalization is a covalent functionalization. Here the problem is without functionalization, you will not be able to tap the potential of nanotubes. But when you are functionalizing, wherever you are creating a functional group or a bond, you are breaking the nanotube and introducing a defect. So as you are functionalizing, you are reducing the strength of nanotube. The very strength of nanotube is because of its uh, ideal crystalline structure without any defects. Defects are the zones where the failure initiates. So if you don't functionalize, you cannot tap its potential. If you functionalize, it, you are reducing its strength. So the, to overcome that, people have also come up with non-covalent functionalization, where long chain organic molecules with certain polar groups will be wrapped around the nanotube. This in turn will bond with the binder. So these are some of the types of functionalizations. You can see here, a non-functionalized CNT, as received CNT, if you add, so it will agglomerate without any dispersion. When you disperse functionalized nanotubes and add into composites, you can see how the individual CNTs are well dispersed. These black color threads kind of structures that you are seeing, so they are functionalized uh, CNTs dispersed in the matrix. So that is the effect of functionalization. Same thing, a non-functionalized uh, matrix here, same images again shown. Again, the type of functionalization also makes a lot of difference. If you functionalize with acid groups, they will form a very weak bond with the matrix. If you functionalize with amine groups, they will react with epoxy and form a strong bond. So what kind of failure patterns you want? If the nanotube is to be pulled during the failure, then you have to generate a functional group which will give weak interface bonding. If you want nanotube to be broken, and the energy to be absorbed by breaking of nanotube, then you have to go for a amine functionalization of nanotube. So these are uh, like each area, functionalization, uh, dispersion, functional, uh, and purification of nanotubes. Again, uh, as the ocean itself with uh, various challenges, 
and uh, various kind of possibilities it gives. As I told, functionalization is essential, but as you are functionalizing it, you are creating defects. A stiff nanotube without any defect, you can see here. But when you functionalize it, all defects will finally make the nanotube very poor. So the strength will come down drastically. So degree of functionalization is very essential. You should introduce functional groups to such an extent that it doesn't damage the CNDs very uh, significantly, but you tap its potential. So degree of functionalization is one of the important criteria to use them as a reinforcement. So this is one thing. Then the, uh, coming to the dispersion, there are different dispersion methods people have tried. One is a sonication. You take the CNDs, mix them into the resin system, then sonicate it. Sonication is a, is a probe, this is a sonic probe and uh, you can dip the sonic probe into a resin bath and then apply a sonic force. The sonic waves, as they are traveling, they create a series of uh, vibrations in the matrix that is dispersed with the CNDs. And as it is creating vibrations, there will be some shear forces that will be assumed by the bunch of CNDs and that results in dispersion of CNDs. So that is uh, one of the method, but disadvantages of sonication. Most of the laboratory methods that were followed, they employed sonication as a method for dispersion of CNT. But the problem with this, this is, this works for some 250 ml or one kg of bath. Then you want to make real big structure. You cannot use the sonication method because the sonic power exponentially decreases as you travel from the probe. So you cannot use it really for large paths. That was one of the disadvantage why it was not successfully implemented anywhere. The second one is a calendaring technique where the, you can see there are three rollers. The center roll is rotating in opposite direction to the other two rolls. So this creates some shear force between the rollers and uh, the nanotube or nanometal mixed resin system is poured between uh, the interface of these rollers because of the shear force experienced by the filler added resin. So the dispersion of the nanotubes takes place. Similarly, there are a number of methods like microfluidizer, shear mixer, surfactant assisted thing. Surfactant means some chemical methods for dispersion and ball milling is also widely used, which is a scalable method. In our lab, we have followed ball milling because it is the most uh, easy to scale, up, uh, scale the process for dispersion. So this is about the purification, dispersion and functionalization of CNDs. So once you have got the CNTs now purified, functionalized and dispersed, how do you make the composite? So most of the laboratory experiments are experiments what they have done. They have taken the CNTs, added them into the epoxy resin system, a liquid resin, then poured into a matrix, uh, poured into a mold, then realized it is CNT dispersed matrix system that is shown here. You can see here, this is only pure CNT in a polymer matrix. Okay. So the other method is you mix the CNTs. Here we have used a solvent. You can see here solvent is used for ease, ease, dis, ease of dispersion. Other method is you add the CNTs in the monomer of polymer, allow it and add the crosslinker, then allow it to cure. So you get a nano component. Basically add CNTs to the polymer matrix of monomer and a curing agent and cure it to get the CNT. So many people have reported uh, Tatra 100%, 150% by adding this. But the problem is there is no use of adding the CNDs in pure resin system because pure resin system strength is of the order of around 100 MPa. So by adding this, you may get 200 MPa. But in most of the aerospace applications, what we talk is around 2000 MPa because carbon fiber, as I told, is already available as a uh, established reinforcement. If you use carbon fiber, and use epoxy matrix, you get a strength of around 2000 MPa. So your reference is carbon fiber reinforced epoxy, not the pure epoxy. There is no application for pure epoxy. So if you see literature, 90% of literature is on this kind of pure resin system added with CNT, which don't have any direct relevance other than to understand some basic uh, science behind the nanocomposites. The actual applications should deal with the carbon fiber reinforced epoxy, take that as a benchmark, add the nanotubes into the resin system and apply that onto the carbon fabric and prove the improvements more than the conventional carbon epoxy composites. So this is how it is made. You mix the CNTs to the resin system, liquid resin system, apply that CNT added resin onto the 
fabrics, carbon fabrics kind of thing that are shown. Then lay up the carbon fabrics and compact and cure. There are other processing methods also. What I have shown is a simple laminated composite that is again made at a lab scale to study what are the preliminary uh, possible improvements. But the actual processes, say for a missile like a shell structure or an aircraft wing, how their process is, this is called a filament winding technique. You can see here the carbon fiber, uh, the fiber spools are running through a resin bath. You can see here, this is a resin impregnation. So here you have to mix your CNT added resin system. The carbon fibers should dip into the CNT added resin system, get wetted with that. Then you wind this resin mixed fiber around the shell. Then after the curing, you remove the central mantle, you get the shell. So this is called a filament winding process. The other widely used method for flat structures like aircraft uh, wings and other things. So what they do is, you can see here, this is a area where the fabrics, this kind of big, big fabrics, uh, layers are put and uh, then allow the resin to pass through it. This is called resin transfer molding. You mix your CNTs into the resin system and then apply vacuum at one end so that the resin with the CNTs uh, gets transferred to the fabric system, then you cure it. So this is called resin transfer molding, means you are putting your reinforcement in a mold, transferring the resin system and making a composite. The disadvantages with the nanomaterials is you cannot follow this particular method because the fabrics are having a, a property of some acting as a filters. Like when you filter the coffee in, the, in our kitchen, so you see that all the fillers in the liquid are getting filtered on the on that filter only. Similarly, if you mix the CNTs into the resin system and uh, try to impregnate that filler added resin, the liquid resin can infiltrate and wet all the fabrics. Across this thickness, there may be some 20 layers. Resin can infiltrate, but all the fillers that you are adding into the resin system will just settle on the topmost layer because topmost layer acts as a filter. So that is one of the disadvantages with the nanomaterials in terms of processing. That's why in one of my first slides, what I have shown, a new technology for new technology to emerge, you have to change your processes also. Then only you can uh, employ it. You cannot use a conventional machines, conventional process and say, I need a very good improvement in strength. It is like asking for an elephant and showing a small window and showing that this is the window I'm having. You try to push this elephant through this small window. So that is what is one of the drawback. So at R&D level, you cannot invest on big, big uh, infrastructure matching to this. And unless we do this, you cannot prove the viability of your system. These are some of the contradicting requirements for the R&D. Now, with this small introduction, now let us start looking at various properties. As I told in one of my first uh, few slides, first few slides, so what I told is we will discuss what is the applicability of this nanomaterials. Uh, to a particular uh, subsystem and a particular uh, property. So we will start with the tensile property. So this uh, we will see um, like after functionalizing and dispersing, adding that, what are the possible improvements in tensile strength for a carbon fiber reinforced epox? As I told, many people have tried uh, CNTs in pure epox. There is no use in that. So already carbon fiber reinforced epoxies are widely used. So in that, by adding CNTs, how much improvement is possible? That was the prime scope of our study. These are the nanotubes that we have got and we have purified by our own methods. Like uh, we have evolved our own methods and we have published also. We have heat treated the nanotubes to around 2000 degrees centigrade where the metals will evaporate and the crystalline perfection of nanotubes also will increase. So nanotubes which are synthesized by CVD, chemical vapor deposition, they see only temperature of around 900 to 1000 degrees centigrade. So, but the perfect crystalline structure for carbon will come only when you heat it to very high temperatures. In arc chamber, you get very good uh, high crystalline structure for nanotubes, but arc chamber gives you very high impurities. So CVD gives less impurities, good control, very high aspect ratio for CNDs, but the crystalline perfection will be poor. So we have taken CVD synthesized CNDs and then heat treated it to very high temperatures so that all the metals will evaporate and the crystalline perfection of CNDs have improved, which are shown through the Raman patterns here. Then we have done XRD to see what are the despacing changes. And then these purified CNDs we added in the resin system. This is a 
like a typical image not our own image for your understanding i am showing like in this resin what is shown here liquid resin we added our cnts func purified functionalized and viscosity cnts we added we have done the amine functionalization then poured them onto the fabric layers then we laid up then relayed the composite uh, laminates this is called a 2d laminate two dimensional fabric laid up is called 2d laminate we also relayed the ud composites means filament wound composites i have shown you in one of the slides filament winding process so filament winded uh, filament wound composites are called ud composites we have experimented with both ud and 2d composites so these are some of the uh, scm tm images of our uh, multi wall carbon nanotube that we have used we have also used carbon nano fibers carbon nano fibers is kind of a crude form of nano tube with a thick shell on the surface whereas here you get very uh, thin shell whereas here you will get thick shell and um, as compared to the hollow zone of the nano material these are the regular carbon fiber images that we have used so now with this if you see in 2005 and many people by theoretical methods like uh, there is a method called rule of mixtures so rule of mixtures says like if you have got any reinforcement say with 2000 mpa strength and 50% volume of reinforcement is in your composite so 50% of 2000 means 1000 mpa strength you should get so the same way people have calculated the strength of cnt is 80 gpa if you put 1% of cnt you should get around around 800 mpa improvement in the strength so that was a kind of expectation but when you add really cnts to the carbon fiber reinforced composites so there is absolutely no improvement at all initially there is no improvement at all so the reason is you can see here the matrix systems that we are using they are very brittle in nature you can see here the nano tubes uh, not still failed this is our own image this is image from the literature the matrix system is failing ahead of the nano materials nano materials as i told has got 10% elongation in one of the slides i have shown as a comparison with the carbon fibers what is the percentage elongation it has got very high percentage of elongation but the matrix system is failing ahead of the nano tube because matrix used for structural applications are very brittle in nature with a 2 to 3% strain failure so it is like a, it is like a bullock cart bullock cart you know two bullocks are there and there is a bar which joins these two bullocks if the bar is broken bullocks though they are able to pull the cart so the, their effort will not uh, be coherent so it will not be synergized similarly binder is like a, uh, that bar that holds the reinforcements or the things which are taking the load together if the binder is broken there is no role of uh, further uh, further uh, reinforcement so you should have a compatible matrix system also as i told what we are trying the processes we have adapted is uh, carbon fiber reinforced matrix process and the resin systems that we have used is that are suitable for carbon fibers carbon fibers has got elongation of 2 to 3% same resin systems we were trying not only we across all the labs people were trying same resin systems same processes that are used for carbon fibers so we realized that this will not work so we have started changing the and uh, changing the resin systems to we thought of improving in those days there is no tough end resin system there are some imported resin systems which will give high elongation but there are certain limitations in their procurement and other things so we have we thought we, unless we modify the matrix system to match with the strain to failure of the reinforcement we will not get a good improvement in the mechanical properties so for that we started modifying it so i'll not go into the chemistry aspects of it but we have added what we added is we added some rubbery toughness what you are seeing here this kind of uh, threads they are rubbery threads it is like a second rubbery phase added into the primary uh, conventional matrix system by optimizing the ratio of this rubbery matrix to the conventional matrix you can see here this is the rubbery matrix dispersed in a conventional matrix so we could get a very good improvement in the fracture toughness fracture toughness is an indication of uh, strain to failure or the toughness of the matrix so here you can see the fracture surfaces which shows reverin surfaces if it is a very glassy that indicates uh, poor fracture toughness by adding this rubbery reinforcement you can see the reverin marks on the fracture surfaces which indicates it has acquired good toughness so with this resin system without any cnt so this with this resin system alone without cnt we could get 
I could not show the exact values because we are online. We could get almost 30 to 40 percent improvement straight away with the conventional fibers. Conventional carbon fiber with this resin system has given an improvement of around 30 to 40 percent. Now to this resin system, we added the CNDs. As I told, we have tried with different types of functionalization. We tried aliphatic and aromatic uh, amine functionalized CNDs. We tried at different volume fractions, fiber to volume ratios. We had a lot of variations. So the improvements due to CNTs are around only less than 10%, whereas the improvements due to the changes in the resin system are significant. So what we realized is the nanotubes as such cannot give a significant improvement in the tensile property. So, but whatever improvements we got, we uh, scaled it up, made uh, bigger structures, the dimensions of the, we, we cannot share. So I put some X meters, Y meters, length and dia. So we have scaled up and realized that CNT added uh, composite motor casings and we have done the burst testing. We could get significant improvement compared to the conventional structure, but the improvements are mainly due to the resin system. Improvements due to the CNTs are very marginal, which are less than 10%. So what we proposed is, what we proposed, the reasons for this marginal improvements is, if you see globally in 2009-10, all the publications used to say that the nanotubes that we add to the carbon epoxy composite acts as anchoring sites. You can see here, this is a conventional carbon fiber. And this is, these are the small, uh, these filament structures at the interface, they are carbon nanotubes. And this is the matrix system from which this got pulled out. You can see the hollow zones are the, the hollow zones from where these nanotubes were pulled out. So what people were proposing is, if you add nanotubes in, into the conventional carbon fiber, during the failure, this carbon fiber should get pulled out of the matrix because nanotubes acts as anchoring sites between the matrix to the fiber. To break this carbon nanotubes, you have to consume that energy because carbon nanotubes to have got high strength, breaking them will consume a significant amount of energy and that results in huge improvement in mechanical properties. People were thinking only dispersion is an issue. If you could disperse them well, you will get very good improvement in mechanical properties. But our study shows that even with very good dispersion, very good dispersion, 1% the mechanical properties increases 5 to 10 percent. Beyond that, even if there is a good dispersion, the mechanical properties will come down. So we have we have questioned the mechanism of this uh, kind of thing. We proposed that improvements are mainly due to the interface toughness. The nanotubes improve the interface toughness because of improved cross-linking at the interface. And because of improved cross-linking, the weak interface becomes strong. Even the nanotubes get well dispersed. You cannot improve the mechanism further. Because nanotubes are not acting as a load bearing members. The reason is, if you see the basics of composites, uh, there is called critical length. Critical length is a length uh, beyond which the uh, reinforcement takes load. It is like a small kid, uh, five years, 10 years old. You cannot assign him any job. You cannot expect any useful work from him unless he is gross up. Similarly, for any reinforcement also, there is a, uh, like uh, what I give an example is a critical age, 10 years, 15 years. Similarly, for reinforcements also, there is a critical length uh, beyond which they start taking the load. So what we propose is nanotubes that we are using, they don't have the critical length. They don't take the, they don't act as a load bearing reinforcement. Really, if you want them to act as a load bearing reinforcement, you should have minimum 200 to 300 microns length. But if you go for that much length, it will get agglomerated too much. You cannot disperse them easily. If you go with a smaller length, they don't act as a load bearing reinforcement. So this was we have published in 2012. And not only that, there are other limitations. Like, um, as I told, CVD synthesized CNTs, they are having many defects. This is one of the typical transmission electron microscope image. You can see across the dia how many places there are defects are there. There are different types of defects in CNTs, which will not go into detail. But there are so many defects because of which the diameter is changing. What we speak about nanotube strength is for a perfect crystalline nanotube structure, which gives 80 GPA, 1 terapascal strength. That is calculated based on some molecular dynamics and also based on the um, uh, assumption that the bonds and along the length of CNTs are ideal and you need to break all these bonds to break the CNT. But if you see actual CNTs that we get in CVD, chemical vapor deposition, so there are so many defects. All these defects will reduce the nanotube strength. 
So CNDs what we are using are not nearly 80 GPA or 100 GPA. It may be around 20 to 30 GPA strength. That's what we have proposed. And if you use arc chamber synthesized CNDs, they will not act as a load bearing reinforcement because as I told, you need minimum length of 200 to 300 microns length. So in arc chamber, you will never get that. You will get only one to two microns length. You can get only in CVD long length CNDs, but CVD gives you defect CNDs. So these are some of the limitations of CNDs. So now what is the way ahead in improving the tensile properties? What we have proposed is, as long as you are using the CNDs along with the conventional reinforcements like this carbon fibers, what I'm showing here is a carbon fiber. Again, taking the example of say bullock card, there are two bullocks, one is very strong, one is weak. So strong is our nanotube, weak is carbon fiber. So if suppose one bullock which is weak falls down, what happens to the other bullock? Though this is having strength, the entire cart will collapse. Similarly, as long as you are using the nanotubes having 80 GPA or say 40 GPA strength with a 8 GPA or 5 GPA strength carbon fiber, the moment carbon fiber fails, the composite fails because any failure, any fracture, any any crack at one zone will easily propagate to the other zone. So as long as you are using the nanotubes along with the conventional carbon fibers as an additional reinforcement, then you can never get a very good improvement in mechanical properties. So if you see the global trends, what people are doing is they are trying to avoid the carbon fibers completely. They are trying to make continuous CNT fibers. You can see this is a web of CNTs collected in a CVD synthesizer process. From this CNT, continuous CNT fibers are drawn, twisted, and the strength of CNT fibers is around 10 GP. Again, it's around 4 to 6 GP strength of carbon fibers that we generally use. So by using this CNT fibers, people have reported strength of the order of around 4,000 MPA against around 2,000 MPA strength that we generally get with carbon fiber. So in terms of tensile strength, there is a definite possibility of improving tensile strength provided you use and exclusively CNT fibers only, continuous CNT fibers. What we have seen so far, most of the research is uh, dispersed CNT fibers. CNT fibers are not continuous like this. A pieces of CNT fibers added it as a powder into the resin system and along with the conventional carbon fibers. That will never work. If you make continuous CNT fibers, realize fabrics with that and then make a composite, then you can get. This is already reported in 2013. People are making uh, composites with strength of around 4000 MPA. Again, it's 2000 MPA uh, strength of present day carbon fiber uh, reinforced composite. So, but in India, if you see, we don't have very good knowledge on uh, textiles. Textile knowledge is very essential for spinning the fibers. People are there to make this kind of CNT webs. But drawing this CNT webs into continuous fibers is a complete domain of textile engineering. And in India, there is no good textile groups which can really do this. Even carbon fibers, we don't have much expertise. So drawing a CNT fibers is next to that. BHL R&D has done very good work, but somehow, because of long gestation periods involved in it, no industry can sustain because the R&D development takes minimum 20 years. So you should keep on investing for 20 years without returns. No industry can do that. So VHL R&D is struggling, though they made CNT fibers, continuous CNT fibers, still they are way far from weaving them into the fabric. So that is the status of India in terms of improving the tensile properties. So as a summary, what I can say is, there is possibility of improving tensile strength of composites by 9% to less than 10%. That is also not because CNT takes the load, that is because CNT improves the interface strength of a conventional composite. But there is a scope to improve the tensile strength if you use continuous CNT fibers. That is still in India, it is still not evolved. Even globally also, people have not used it for any application, but proven in the laboratory level. Now let us see the flexural strength. Flexural strength uh, is like bending load. If you apply a bending load, so how the composite behaves, where at what load it fails, that is a flexural strength. Flexural strength is significant as I told for bridges, composite bridges, even for aircraft wings, mostly it is a flexural load that comes on it. Okay, people have reported uh, improvements of the order of 25 to 30% with the nano materials. But again, our, our own experiment shows that people uh, like uh, most of like even IIT Delhi, some IITs, they have reported 30-40% improvement with the addition of CNDs. But when we interacted, they ignored a few points. So our first point is they are not uh, 
they were of significance of fiber volume fraction. What they have done, they have taken regular carbon epoxy, added CNTs to it, and then uh, uh, reported improvement of around 25 to 30 percent. But they used probably a very low VF fiber volume fraction. Means matrix is 60 percent, fiber is only 40 percent, 40 VF. That is called 40 fiber volume fraction of composite. So if a 40 fiber volume fraction, forget about CNTs. If you take a 40 fiber volume fraction composite. Carbon CFRP, it may have a strength of around 500 MPa. If you take 70 BF composite, so no CNDs, straight away 70 BF composite, you get around 800 MPa to 900 MPa. Now, the strength improvements of CNDs with the nano materials, say for 40 BF, it may be around 25 to 30 percent. So, your 500 MPa may become 600, 700, but with a conventional composite, conventional carbon fiber, you can anyway get it without even CNT if you make with a high fiber volume fraction. So the reasons, uh, as if you try to add the CNTs in high fiber volume fraction composites, they will negatively affect it. So strength will come down. So the reasons for this, we have systematically studied, we have published also. When you make a low VF composite, what happens is uh, the these are the reinforcement layers. These these are the reinforcement layers. These are the nanotubes. The matrix thickness in the interfacial zones is very high. So the crack propagation through these interfacial zones between two layers, uh, in the case of non-CNT composite will be easy, so it breaks easily. If you add CNTs, so these CNTs will resist the crack propagation. These are some of the crack propagation images that are shown here. So that results in significant improvement in the flexural strength and even shear strength. But if you compact it very well, there is no gap between uh, one layer to the other layer. There is no thin, thick matrix layer. Then what happens is these fabric layers themselves are interlocked. There is no need of CNT. So crack cannot propagate through the interface. Crack has to propagate by through this intralayer, this sorry, interlayer, like this across the thickness. So in such cases, role of CNTs is marginal. In fact, they may negatively affect us. That's what we, we have identified. So the uh, finally, what we found is if you make only a 40 VF or 50 VF composite, then nanotubes or nanofibers can improve the strength, but that if, that kind of uh, strength values you can get if you directly make a 70 VF composite. So, but globally, people have made uh, the CNT composites with 10 to 20, 25% improvement in shear strength and flexural strength. As I told, this uh, resin transfer molding is one of the process used for large structures for aircraft wings. And uh, I told that uh, the fabric layers acts as filters for the CNTs. So you cannot use this process. So what people have done is, they made pre-prex. pre, -prex. pre -prex is you on a, uh, take the fabric, then run the fabric through a resin bath mixed with the CNDs, then dry it. So means uh, some semi-curing that is called B-stage. So that is called a pre-prex. pre, -prex. pre -prex is a uh, resin added fabric, which is semi-cured. And you need not apply any resin for that. Straight away, you take it and lay up and then cure it. That is called pre -prex. So CNT added pre -prex were used globally to overcome the processing issues and people have used up to 20-25% improvement in mechanical properties for various systems. So compared to tensile, flexural improvements are definitely possible, but again, it depends on the fiber volume fractions that we are looking at. The next one is impact property. As I told, impact has got applications in both uh, lightweight uh, helicopters as well as the tank armors and other things. So CNTs are reported to have very good uh, impact resistance, energy absorption characteristics, basically. So if a composite, anyway, as CNT alone, you cannot use it. You have to add it into a system, composite system, and use it. When a composite system is subjected to impact load, this kind of failures will take place. More to shear, matrix cracking, and kinking. Kinking, this kind of kinking, this is called kinking. So these are some of the failure modes. And nanomaterials, by virtue of their ability to increase the shear strength, interlaminar shear strength will increase the mode to shear resistance. And uh, they're, they're able to increase the strength of matrix. As I told in one of my slides, if you add CNTs into matrix, matrix strength will increase. So they strengthen the matrix. As the matrix is strengthened, there is an improvement in the impact and uh, even compression properties. So there is a possibility of improving these properties by adding the nanomaterials. So these studies we have done by adding nano clay, carbon nanotubes, and different other things. Then we have done the impact studies by dropper impact tester. You can see here, this is the force versus displacement. A normal material, 
when it fails at low force the nano material added things carbon nano fiber added things shows very good improvement in the uh, impact resistance means they take more load before failure so that is a very good uh, indication okay now uh, the reason for such improvements are like if you take a composite uh, that is used in impact even for a body armor like bulletproof jackets that people wear so the rear side damage that is called back face trauma that is very important there should be a minimum damage in the back face back face is touching the body body of a human being if it is a bulletproof jacket body of the tank if it is a armor armor uh, thing so what happens is if the front face damage should be maximum front face damage if it is maximum then the most of the energy is uh, consumed in generating the front face damage and by the time the impact load moves to the rear side of the composite the damage will be minimum because most of the damage is already consumed in most of the energy impact energy is already consumed in generating the damage on the frontal side okay so what does cnt sir nano clay uh, all these things do is because they make a network uh, in the composite so when you give a impact load they dissipate the energy very easily uh, from the point of impact in case of a normal composite Uh, across the thickness top most layers there is not much energy dissipation so the damage will be very minimal you can see here this is a blank without any nano material the top face damage is very minimal when you add nano materials the top face damage is increasing because energy is quickly dissipated because of the nano material uh, network so because the top face is consuming more energy back face trauma is less this is you can see a blank with more back face trauma and kinking with the nano material but now again there is a catch here there are many publications showing nanotubes are very good in impact but all these impact studies people do with a drop tower impact tester with a impact velocity of around 5 meters to 10 meters per um, second maximum 5 to 10 meters per second but actual impact in actual defense applications if you see they come at a velocity of 500 to 1000 meters per second bullets or enemy fires they come at very high velocity so they you cannot test that with a, a normal drop tower impact tester you have to test with again a bullet only so there it is more than impact it is a, a penetration it is a, like a penetration localized impact and penetration so there you will not have sufficient time at such high velocities what we found is nano materials don't have sufficient time to dissipate the energy in case of low velocity impacts they have got time to dissipate the energy but in case of high velocity impacts the shock waves will not give you sufficient time to dissipate horizontally they will dissipate vertically through the thickness so nano materials effectiveness in terms of high velocity impacts is very limited that is what our uh, finding is similarly for that is what uh, shown is for tank armor this is for helicopter armor people use kevlar so again kevlar is itself is very tough adding cnts have not shown significant improvement for high velocity impacts people have tried other nano materials like sheer thickening fluids like at normal things the viscosity is low the moment you apply some load they becomes viscous means their viscosity increases they are called shear thickening fluids non newtonian fluids people have tried some nano material based non newtonian fluids to dissipate the energy all these efforts are good for low velocities high velocities there is not much time for these nano materials to respond so what is the way ahead for impact uh, resistance improvement is again as i told continuous cnt fibers is the only way you cannot add this kind of uh, nano materials as a filler dispersed fillers and expect some miracle in any of these properties if you use a continuous cnt fiber in place of uh, conventional glass or kevlar fiber they have got very high energy absorption capability because of high entanglement so they take huge shear loads to uh, disentangle that uh, consumes the energy and globally people are working on this kind of continuous cnt fibers to improve the impact uh, resistance even at high velocities so that is one of the challenges to use the nano materials for high velocity impact applications now coming to the compression strength compression strength is requirements comes in case of torpedoes kind of thing where you fire a torpedo it hits uh, the the tip hits the water body at very high velocity it is an impact come compression load that comes on it similarly as the torpedo moves in the water body the water body also exerts you know like symmetrical pressure a compressive pressure in case of missile it is a tensile because of the hook tensile forces coming from the burning of the propellant in case of torpedoes it is a water body exerting compressive loads so compressive failures 
they get initiated because of the out of plane rotation of the fibers if the matrix to the fiber strength is very good then this you can see here that is what i have shown this is a if it is a regular fiber the threading should be like this it is like a continuous thread but if you apply a compressive load what happens is this buckles this fiber slightly buckle and undertake out of plane rotation and shear failure initiate if the interface between the fiber to matrix is very strong then this buckling and the shear failures will be stopped so cnt is can do this kind of work because cnt strengthen the interface cnt strengthen the matrix so strengthened interface and strengthened matrix can give significant improvement in the this kind of compressive properties we have done lot of studies we could get some 25% improvement in the compressive properties due to the cnts okay so this is about uh, summary for the structural applications i think we are almost one hour into our presentation next 15 20 minutes we will see functional properties so summary of the structural applications are as i told each system looks for a different property in case of missiles you need tensile property as a main property remaining properties are also required but main is tensile strength tensile modulus transversal tensile strength longitudinal tensile strength and all these things here nanotubes as a filler will give you very limited improvement but scope is continuous cnt fiber flexural strength improvements are possible at low fiber volume fractions high fiber volume fractions flexural strength improvements are limited okay and uh, pre pricking method you have to evolve you cannot use conventional uh, processes of resin transfer molding here next one is a low velocity impact uh, for impact applications low velocity impacts nanometers will work for high velocity impacts again you have to work with continuous cnt fibers only so the summary is the future for nanometers is in terms of continuous carbon nanotube fibers not this kind of dispersed fibers what most of the laboratories even uh, indian labs are doing so now coming to the functional applications we'll just quickly glance some of the functional applications so if you see one of the major functional application is the stealth uh, air aircrafts mostly missiles that is not much uh, requirement but still it is there but the aircrafts stealth aircrafts are the now the fifth generation aircrafts which will give you huge advantage in terms of lethality and uh, also survivability so stealth is a kind of thing where the incident microwaves how the enemy detects the aircraft is by they send a microwave through their radars the radars touch the aircraft surface they get reflected back to the radar and based on the reflected rays intensity and other things they measure what is the altitude what is the velocity of the airborne object what is the size and other thing so by any means the incident energy from the radar if it is absorbed by the material it doesn't go back to the source radar then radars will not feel any new object is coming so for that there are certain materials the old generation stealth is through ferrites ferrites are ferromagnetic materials like iron oxides kind of thing, magnetic materials in normal conditions they the magnetic domains will be like this they are randomly oriented with net magnetic uh, energy h is equal to 0 so if you use this kind of ferrites as a coating or as a filler in the composite and make the aircraft structures so when a microwave from the radar falls so the microwaves has got some directionality microwaves are basically electromagnetic waves so the magnetic direction of the microwave is like this so all the magnetic dipoles in the ferrites will try to orient with the uh, incident microwave now because the microwaves moves in a flip flapping fashion like this sinusoidal fashion the moment it changes its direction the magnetic dipoles also try to flip flop to orient and reorient and keep them oriented with the incoming microwaves so during that flip flopping process lot of energy is consumed that results in uh, consumption of the incident microwaves thus the enemy radars cannot detect but the ferrites are in the outdated technology ferrites the uh, density is very high and they reduce the mechanical properties of the systems or composites so old generation stealth aircrafts used ferrites but now no new generation aircraft uses it because of heavy weight it imparts to the structure now new generation aircrafts are using carbon materials carbon is a conducting if you disperse them in a glass epoxy gfrp in one of my first slides i have shown cfrp and gfrp are the two major classes if you take gfrp add carbon materials and expose this system to a microwave field so there is a polarity between the carbon to the dielectric medium and this again this polar molecules will try to flip flop with the propagating wave that consumes the energy 
so this has got advantage because carbon is low dense and with very low amount of carbon you can get uh, required microwave absorption and carbon comes in different forms with different conductivities so you can fine tune your microwave absorption to the required frequency that is the advantage here the carbon anode tubes have got some of the applications here as i want to say like ferrites are useful for certain frequencies of radars but we don't know what radars uh, what are the radar frequencies of enemy enemy can use any radar uh, with a different frequencies so if you want to observe all the frequencies so only carbon is the only material because of its wide array of uh, conductivity so you can tune conductivity to the required frequency levels so that is about the carbon i'll i think some slides are missing where carbon anode tube based materials uh, showing the micro absorption i think i deleted some slides i cannot show online but carbon anode fibers carbon anode tubes when you add into this glass epoxy they show the micro absorption in a defined frequency bands but carbon again has got a limitation carbon cannot absorb low frequency ferrites cannot absorb in the high frequency now the latest trend is core shell nanoparticles where the metal iron iron oxide kind of thing is uh, covered with a thin layer of carbon this is a carbon layer and the core is having the metal so this the since there are certain synthesis methods to realize it it is like a combination of ferrite and carbon where you can get both low frequency and high frequency absorption without any weight penalty so this is the latest trend in the area of stealth with the carbon nano materials people are also working with the carbonyl iron balls with different sizes nano sizes with carbon anode tubes as additional fillers as i told combination of ferrites and carbon materials people are using that liquids to apply as a paints commercially also certain companies are giving but again painting is a challenging task because the spallation and other issues if you can make a structure that is always better but nano materials have found some of the applications in this kind of uh, stealth paints basically so for some of the applications now other applications in one of my few slides i have shown as you are replacing the metals with the composites as i told metals were previously used now in most of the aerospace people are replacing the steel based or iron based metals or titanium even aluminum to cfrps or gfrps the problem is metals are good conductors there is no issue of static charge dissipation but the moment you put an uh, aircraft structure with composite when aircraft travels at high mach it generates some static charge so dissipation of static charge is essential otherwise it uh, interferes with your uh, ground communication so so you need to impart or increase the conductivity of composites so we have done some work on that if it is a conventional composite what is shown here this is a carbon fiber this is a carbon fiber filament this is a matrix in case of conventional composite what happens is this matrix is a insulating matrix is a polymer which is insulating which finally reduces the conductivity if you add nano materials you can see here the nano materials are bridging between two carbons and thus the ensuring continuous continuity in the conductivity this is a nano material a typical image how the electron hopping can happen then if you mix this with some conducting polymers as well then the polymer matrix also gets some conductivity so polymer conducting polymers with nano materials can give you very good conductivity improvements which may be sufficient to address these issues otherwise there are so many crude methods people are following but this can straight away address the issue now if you see globally what people are doing people have made cnt fabrics i have shown you some cnt webs in cvd in synthesis cnt based webs carbon nanotube webs that webs were pressed between two two rollers and made into a fabric this is a continuous cnt fabric and they are using this in the topmost layer of the polymer composites to get the conductivity this kind of things are used in some of the better uh, crafts globally so this is a global trend so other than nano tubes there are other materials called carbon nano fibers carbon nano fibers are a crude form of nano tube they are also having very good applications on par with nano tubes as i told nano tubes though they are having very good strength and all these things the improvements are limited because of certain limitations of our processing our uh, we are using them with the conventional fibers and other things so whatever little improvements that we are getting with nano tubes similar improvements you can get even with the carbon nano fibers carbon nano fibers advantage is their conductivity is close to conventional carbon fibers again you can fine tune them there are certain applications uh, like this is a nano fiber mixed uh, resin which is being applied onto the fabric this is a fabric 
and this is uh, after application this is cut and then laid up into a mold this is a cnt or cnf dispersed resin system this is applied onto this fabric then laid up and realized into form of composite because we are online i cannot show some of the results but uh, nano fibers are also on par with nano tubes can show most of these functional properties even structural properties so other than that there are some other uh, applications for nano materials like uh, coarse nano particles i already shown this is called camouflaging camouflaging is like our chameleon so which assumes the background color so if it is uh, in a green color green background it assumes green if it is on a tar rod it assumes the black color similarly if you can apply certain nano materials like zinc oxide kind of things uh, add it into some solvents and apply them as a paint on some structures so because of the size basically the ceramic oxides basically metal oxides color is decided by their size so you can see same metal oxide showing different colors because of different size of these nano materials so if you apply this kind of materials onto the vehicles so vehicle visibility visibility will come down because it merges with the whatever the background it is moving so that is called camouflaging it is like a stealth it is a called visible stealth yeah, stealth in the visible frequency range so this is one of the successful application area for nano materials similarly i have shown you some slides on damping so if you just uh, think about a torpedo that is traveling uh, in a in a kind of uh, water environment like a sea water environment torpedo has got a propeller at the back and seekers in the front so propeller makes lot of noise and that noise travels through the body to the seeker and that disturbs the efficiency of seekers to seek the target so if you use metals damping is very difficult if you use composites damping will be better means they will suppress the sound propagation if you use nano materials along with the conventional composites the damping efficiency will significantly improve because damping is basically sound sound energy suppression sound travels through series of compressions and refraction so it creates a kind of uh, uh, strain at the interface so because of the mismatch in the strain to failure strain to failure or the strain of the nano tube to the matrix nano tube to the fiber matrix to the fiber so what happens is there uh, is called stick slip mechanism that plays role so when uh, that kind of more energy basically it consumes more energy the stick slip mechanisms due to nano materials consumes more energy that significantly improves the damping efficiency of materials similarly nano tubes nano materials are also used for uh, some applications like uh, if you see composites or even metals are worst for uh, sea water environment because of corrosion issues composites are good there are some marine grade composites but again with uh, time because of water ingress into the composite the efficiency performance efficiency of composite may go down if you add nano materials the sea water ingress into the composite will be very difficult because these say these are the nano materials the sea water has to uh, take a very torturous path to enter into the composite so that in ensures longevity for the sea water borne uh, composite application similarly in some balloons the balloon launched uh, armors are also there weapons the balloons should retain their air to travel more distance so but with any polymer if you see they have got some degree of permeability so there is always certain degree of leakage so with the time if the balloon loses the air it, the travel efficiency will go down if you add nano clays again because the permeability um, will come down means the uh, air cannot diffuse so easily through the polymer the efficiency of this kind of balloons will be better so this is some of the applications then i'll just see some of the ability of composites they told up to 2000 2500 degree centigrade no metal can withstand there are certain composites like phenolic composites where they undergo endothermic pyrolysis means when you expose them to very high temperatures they burn but they while burning they take the heat they consume the energy heat energy and they sacrifice themselves they are called sacrificial composites or ablative composites but the issue is uh, you, you can still improve their performance by reducing their thermal conductivity because back side of this ablative composite there will be some metal structures if you reduce the thermal conductivity of this ablative you can better protect the metals reduce the thickness of this ablative structure so these are some of the things and if you increase the shear strength of this ablative because it undergoes some shearing because of the plumes coming from the burning propellant burning 
so if you increase the shear strength also it will have some advantage so nano materials are explored widely even we have done a lot of work with uh, silica zirconia and so many things even carbon nanotubes carbon nanotubes have got some limitation in improving the ablative properties because carbon nanotubes are good thermal conductors so improve the they, they improve the thermal conductivity which is not intended for this application so here that's why you have to go for some ceramic nano materials like silica alumina zirconia so we have done a lot of work with this silica alumina zirconia we could show the significant reduction in the thermal conductivity but there are certain issues there is a improvement in the ablation rate it still needs to be addressed so coming to the summary of uh, this uh, functional applications stealth is a promising area then other than that damping then electrical conductive structures there are some ceramic applications which are not covered um, there are so many functional applications so what i can say is compared to structural functional applications for nano materials are much better but any r and d takes time it is not that people are waiting for your material to immediately deploy it because people have already got familiarity with some conventional material they have got faith in that uh, unless you break that uh, thing with significant improvements you cannot find place for any application that is where nano materials are still struggling so ceramics we will not cross ceramics one of the issue is the brittleness of ceramics okay so that brittleness people are trying to improve the toughness of ceramics by adding some nano fillers which acts as crack deflectors you can see here this is a nano filler deflecting the crack so crack deflection improves the energy thus it should increase the toughness but toughness improvements by two fold people have got but that is not sufficient we should get a toughness value of around 20 mpa root meter which is like a fiber reinforced composite toughness again as 3 to 5 mpa root meter that is generally observed for ceramics so that is still not achieved with this nano materials so but the lot of scope for research the future is uh, composites especially not only nano future is for composites because uh, nano is one aspect of composite composites today not only load bearing they have got uh, sensing and actuation they are smart structures adaptive structures self healing structures any damage is there they will heal their own uh, damage self healing structures are there then uh, you can add some solar power generating panels onto these composites so these are some of the this image uh, attracted me i added this in 2010 the composite uh, wing with the solar panels without any fuel one small aircraft has roamed around the globe so that is the kind of futuristic composites composites which are smart which are load bearing which which are also fuel generation source which can act as sensing and actuation which can heal their own defects themselves so they are all uh, coming up in future and there there is a future for composites and nano tubes and nano materials will add some value to it so this is what uh, today is talk thank you very much for your patience with me thank you now, madam you can take over yes so thank you very much sir uh, any questions from the audience you may please raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask or you can type in the chat window so assuming there are no questions from the audience right okay, okay. so thank you very much sir for your time and uh, from present and sharing your knowledge with us Right. you can see that you have a significant contribution from your end to the field of aeromaterials in india and we would like to work with you in future also for sure sure ma'am welcome right yes okay thank you all right goodbye thank you all sir. the best right i'll leave madam yes Uh, the feedback link for the session one has been posted in the chat window. Request the participants to kindly fill it up.